Hi everyone and welcome back to another Continuous Time Signals and Systems video. The topic of today's video is an amplitude modulation example. This video was made for the ECE 220 course at George Mason University during our extremely exciting Spring 2020 semester. For more information about Mason and the department, you can check out these websites. So in this example, we're going to consider um, this basic system where we start with a signal M of T. We could think of it as a message signal M of T. We run it through multiplying by a signal P of T, and that gets us X of T. Uh, and the P of T we'll use is cosine, cosine omega zero T. Okay, um, And then the result of that is X of T. And then we're going to consider that we have some way to transmit this signal X of T through a channel, say through a radio link. And we're going to assume for the sake of today's discussion that it's a lossless channel. So nothing happens to the signal X of T as it propagates through this little channel. So we get it over here at the receiver side. And then we're going to proceed to multiply it by P of T again and then um, process it with an LTI system defined by an impulse response H of T that has this frequency response. And then the result will be Y of T. And so what we're going to hope for in this simple modulation and demodulation example is that when we get over and compute Y of T that we're going to get back our original message signal M of T. Now for the example that we're going to consider today, um, the message signal has this frequency response. So it's a little triangular frequency response here. Um, and we're going to assume that our frequency of the cosine we're modulating with is omega zero. Um, and it's equal to two pi times a thousand. And the frequency response of the system that we're processing with over here um, has cutoff frequency of plus and minus half of omega zero and a scaling factor of two. All right, so these are the parameters of the example we're going to consider today. And we're going to try and um, solve for um, the spectrum x of j omega and then the spectrum y of j omega. So let's get started. OK, so our first job is to find x of j omega. We're given the frequency response of m of j omega. And we're given p of t is equal to cosine 2 pi 1000 t. So now we have to figure out what this is equal to. Now if we remember our multiplication property, also could be called the modulation property, um, we're multiplying uh, two signals together. So when we multiply two signals together, what do we do to their frequency response? So that's going to be the key to finding x of j omega. So why don't you pause the video and try and solve it yourself, and then I'll go through the solution. OK, so the key to this solution is remembering that x of j omega is going to be equal to 1 over 2 pi, um, the convolution of m of j omega with p of j omega. All right, so that's from our multiplication property. When we multiply in the time domain like we did here, we convolve the frequency responses, and there's this 1 over 2 pi scaling factor uh, in the frequency response. So um, now we have to just remember what uh, the Fourier transform of P of t, the Fourier transform of the cosine, looks like. Hopefully you easily remember that. That looks like two impulses located at plus and minus the frequency of the sinusoid. So plus and minus 2 pi 1,000. And each of those impulses has area of pi. Okay, um, So that's what p of j omega looks like. And so now to do this, we just have to convolve this with this. Um, and put in a scaling factor of 1 over 2 pi. So if I convolve this triangle with these two impulses, well, convolving with an impulse is easy. It just puts a copy of this thing at the location of each of the impulses. So if I do that, then I get out x of j omega is going to look like this. Um, 
It will have a copy of the triangle at the location of each of the impulses. So I get a copy of the triangle at plus and minus 2 pi a thousand. And what would happen here? Well, normally, right, each of these would be, this was a height of 1, but it would get scaled by pi. Um, so this would be pi, and that would be pi. The only thing is that we have this additional 1 over 2 pi out front. So this would be pi over 2 pi, pi over 2 pi, right? So that results in essentially a triangle at plus and minus 2 pi a thousand. And now the height of those triangles is going to be pi over 2 pi or 1 half. So that's what this system did, right? We multiplied by a cosine and that put a copy of the spectrum of the thing we were multiplying at the plus and minus frequencies of the cosine and it scaled each of those copies by a half. So we have x of j omega. Very good. Now let's try and solve further into the system. So now we're going to try and find y of j omega. So remember x of t would propagate through our little channel and it ends up over at the receiver and then we're going to multiply by the cosine again that gets me r of t then we're going to process it with an LTI system with this frequency response. Okay, and that gets us y of t. So we want to find y of j omega. So why don't you pause the video and try and solve for y of j omega yourself. Okay, so let's see how you did. All right, so we're first going to calculate r of j omega. R of t is the multiplication of x of t with cos the cosine, okay? So it'll be the convolution of um, the transform of the cosine with this. Well, we know what the transform of the cosine looks like, right? We know from our previous work in this problem. The transform of the cosine is two impulses, each with area pi at plus and minus two pi a thousand. Oops. Okay. All right. So we've got that. Um, all right. So that's the zero point there. So, okay, we can do the convolution here. We're convolving this with this. Well, convolving with a single impulse just puts a copy of this thing at the location of the impulse. So, all right. So we're going to end up with r of j omega, r of j omega. Well, let's see, what are we going to end up with? Well, we're going to get a copy of this thing at 2 pi a thousand. So let me show you where 2 pi a thousand is. That's 2 pi 1000. So a copy of this there, copy of this there, would put half height thing at zero, right? Because it's two pi to the thousand to the left. Let me draw that in blue. And a half height thing here, which would be at two pi a thousand plus two pi a thousand. So that's two pi two thousand. And um, it would be um, half height, but now we're going to scale by a factor of pi and then scale by 1 over 2 pi. So this is going to end up being 1 quarter and 1 quarter. Okay, and now, all right, so that put the copy of this thing at 2 pi plus a thousand, uh, 2 pi, positive 2 pi a thousand, and now we're going to put the copy at minus 2 pi a thousand, and I'll draw that one in green. Um, so here's minus 2 pi 1,000. So we'll get a copy over there at minus 2 pi 2,000. And another copy here at 0, 
right? And this will be height a quarter, and the green one here will be height one quarter. Again, the scaling that we've done before. So we could add those things together, right? If we add these two together, because they show up right on top of one another, um, so then that would give me something. Uh, I could just redraw it over here. R of j omega is going to be height a half there, and then height one quarter out at the two outer ones. So uh, this is minus 2 pi 2,000 and 2 pi 2,000. So then how do we find, how do we find y of j omega? Well, y of j omega is the result of processing r of t, the result of processing r of t with this system. Well, if we run it through, then we know we convolve r of t and h of t, which we, means we multiply their transforms. So if we put h of j, we're going to multiply this and that to get r of j omega, to get y of j omega. Well, if I multiply, right, h of j omega is going to have a cutoff somewhere in here, right? It's only going to pick out this one because it's equal to zero all the way out here, right? It'll pick out this one and it'll scale it by a height of two. So then we're going to end up with r of j omega, or sorry, y of j omega is just going to be this single triangle around zero. And now the height is going to be two times a half, which will be one. And remember, these edge frequencies were exactly as they were before, minus 2 pi 200 and 2 pi 200. So, all right. So now, hopefully you see that we got back, this was, what we got here is exactly equal to the m of j omega we started with. Um, so hopefully you can see how if we go back to our system here. If we take our message signal m of t and run it through this whole system, y of t ends up being exactly equal to m of t. So you can see how this simple modulation and demodulation system works. And this is what's used in AM radio or something very similar to it, which you'll learn more about in classes like ECE 460. So I hope you found this to be a useful example, and uh, I encourage you to give it a try on your own and work it through. And again, uh, this was made for the ECE 220 course, and you can find out more information here. Thanks for watching the video.